I very much enjoy helping people in this way. So let me explain how it works. The first thing that we do is we have a conversation. And I'll be asking you such obvious questions as, so, you want this yurt, what do you want to do with it? Just to give you an idea, the people that I've sold yurts to have used them for a whole different variety of purposes. There's a couple who use their yurt to go camping, especially to dance camps in Wales and other parts of England. And uh, they only want to be in it for two, three, maybe seven nights at a time. And for them, a 10-footer was just what they needed. They've got the wood-burning stove in there. It provides them with their little home from home when they spent the day dancing. Uh, another person I'm thinking of, they wanted the yurt because basically what they wanted to do is they wanted to have an extension to their guest house business. And they realised that if they were to buy a 17-foot yurt from me, that's what they particularly wanted, they would actually have something that would be big enough to offer as a guest bedroom and it would actually be very popular as a guest bedroom. And I'm delighted to say that after 18 months in service they made their money back and have got a surplus on it. So that's a rather unusual use, perhaps as a guest house extra bedroom. Some people will actually choose to have one because they want a conservatory but rather than spending several thousand pounds on a conservatory which once it's up could only ever be in one place, they want the conservatory they can put here, put there, take away if they want to. Another use for a yurt was um, Sirencester College. They decided they wanted one so that they could run outreach events in villages in Gloucestershire and they could take this yurt out, uh, a really big one, that's a 20-footer, and have workshops and classes held in there. Um, so there's many different reasons why people have them. I know of someone at the moment, a fellow yurt maker, he's, con he's being contracted to make a yurt for someone's wedding. All sorts of different reasons. So when I know what it is I, you want your yurt to be used for, and I've got some idea of how many people it needs to accommodate, and how long that yurt needs to be up, that will enable me to give you some useful feedback about what size of yurt you're going to want. And once we've got to that stage, I can then give you a price quote and give you an idea how much it's going to cost. And you can either go for the basics, whereby I provide you with a frame and the canvas, which is what is the least likely option from my past history experience, to what's by far the most likely option, which is they want more of a full package. Uh, that would be the frame, the canvas, the PVC floor, and then the Turkish rugs for the floor, possibly even Turkish rugs for the walls for insulation and extra beauty, and maybe even the wood-burning stove. The coppicing season, which is what all my roundwood yurts are made out of, basically begins in October and ends in March. So that's the time of year when I can go out and collect the roundwood, which is generally the most popular option. The frame comes out rather cheaper that way. The alternative is for me to make a sawn ash yurt. And if I make a yurt out of sawn ash, larch rather wood, then that is obtainable at any time of year. However, I do go on the road each year promoting my work, so summer months can be a matter of dovetailing in your order with what else I'm doing. The traditional time of year to be making yurts really is winter and spring, but I'm willing to make one at any time. So that's the first thing really is, if it's round wood then I've got to harvest the materials in the winter, if it's not round wood it can be done any time of year. In terms of length of time taken, I would say a minimum turnaround time from placing the order to being ready is two weeks and the maximum is going to be eight weeks and it will depend very much on the size. The smaller the yurt, the quicker the build, the larger the, the yurt, the more of a long-term project in the building thereof. Most yurt makers provide a yurt with a crown, which is literally a wooden wheel and all the roof poles, which are individual, are poked into holes in this crown wheel and that's the classic traditional design. Now over the years, I started making it in exactly that way, but over the years I've come to favour what I call the Enya Brinkman design, and I call it this in honour of the woman who initiated me into this particular method of yurt making. The walls are made by joining together poles through knotting into what we call the trellis, which is this concertina shape you've seen on the website, and that's called the Karna. Now, with this particular onion brinkman design, as well as having a wall carner, what we also have is we have a roof carner. Now this means a whole load of implications. The first thing is there's no crown. 
and the huge advantage there is if you're transporting your yurts the most difficult item to transport is the crown because you can't fit it into a, a car at all and getting it on the roof is a bit of an issue so we generally favour for all except the largest yurts to offer a person a crownless yurt so the most difficult item to transport doesn't exist that's the first advantage the second advantage is that because all the roof poles are joined into a roof carna with this Anya Brinkman design, there's no question of losing poles. There's no question of, oh, where's that pole gone? Because they're all joined together, you simply can't lose them. You also, and you will have noticed this in looking at the website, some of the YouTube uh, film footage there, that some of the yurt dwellers use some very attractive banding materials and they actually link the roof poles together by this banding which they pull and loop through. Well, there's no need for that with this design because, as you can see from the picture of this yurt, because all the roof kind of poles are all tied together with the same knotting technique as with the walls, it's basically a lot stronger. So, I know of, uh, one of the people who I made a yurt for, and he set himself out one day, it was at the Big Ring Gathering, I'm going to put this up on my own, it's a 16 foot crownless yurt. Now, a 16 foot conventional yurt, you need three people, you can't do it with less. If you've got two people, you can't do it. You actually require three people because of the poking of the roof poles into the crown. That's what you need to do that. Well, he put it up entirely on his own. He had no help whatsoever from beginning to end. And that's gratifying. So that's a huge advantage to the crown. This yurt doesn't need extra help. The quoted price will include delivery of the yurt to the location of your specification. And you might think, well, that means obviously you're just going to transport it to my home. Well, maybe, but there was a, a family of four and they'd actually got themselves a lovely campsite in Dartmoor and they wanted me to drive with their yurt down to this campsite. I think the idea is that they were supposed to be there first and I was supposed to arrive some hours later when they got familiar with the site but I ended up turning up a few hours before them. Very, very beautiful. And then the other part of the package is apart from transporting it to the site, that's a full erection workshop. So actually how to put the yurt up so they have all the information there. And that was one of my most pleasurable yurt erections is arriving at a, a field in the middle of nowhere, beautiful site, and the family arrive, we erect the yurt, and I walk away just as it's coming on to dusk, knowing they're all happily ensconced in their new home. However, I would say that my most satisfying experience was when I was contracted to build the yurt for a couple who then in due course were married in the yurt and that was an ability to combine the working with the ceremonies and the weddings together with the yurt making that was a truly amazing experience for which I'm always grateful and that memory will stay with me always